Hey everybody, No Gas Nico here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Today, I'm gonna to be installing a level two charger at my folks' house so the grandkids can charge their cars and also their kids, but I won't be charging here, but if I have to, it'll be available. So I'm gonna go through a quick and easy install even on an old electrical unit. Stay tuned, here we go. Okay, first we're gonna hang the bracket. I picked this up off Amazon. We're gonna hang the cord on. We're using a 16 amp. 240 volt with a NEMA 620 plug and that's going to be used for a 3.6 kilowatt charging. Alright, I'm in the garage. Ideally, you'd probably want to put the plug in the garage, but here's the issue I have. The feed from the garage is coming up through this half inch conduit and there's two circuits that come in there. So there's two sets of wire. You can see the two wires coming out here. So there's two wires stuffed in this cable and that runs underneath the concrete. To here goes through the drop ceiling in the basement. There's absolutely no way to stuff another wire in there. So I am stuck having to mount this thing here and I'll drop a wire, put a box right down there below to plug this into. All right, continuing on. All right, so here's the panel. I got a few things I need to remove out of my way. Uh, but one thing that was noticed was this guy right here. I did put a meter on there and that thing is live. I don't know why it's up there. So we're going to disconnect this plug, find out which breaker it belongs to and then we're going to run a new wire outside. All right, let's stop right here for the level two. If you do not know what you're doing, do not take the cover off this electrical panel. Hire an electrician. Two, make sure you apply with all codes and standards. Get a permit if a permit's required in your area. Do not, I repeat, do not do any electrical work without following all codes, regulations, laws, and all safety precautions because... This could be deadly. You can catch your house on fire if you're doing something wrong. So, again, if you're not familiar with electrical, do not do this. So, continuing on, I'm going to remove the panel. I'm going to remove that old plug. Um, taking some time here to kind of try to figure out where this thing is coming from. And what I learned, uh, well, first off, my dad's panel's a mess. This is a wiring nightmare. You can see in there, it's all spider webbed. Um, so that needs to be upgraded, but he says he's probably gonna sell the house in a couple years. Um, I know upgrading that would be a good selling point, but anyway, um, we'll go ahead and take that wire off. And what I found is that thing was actually double tapped off of the dryer feed. Now he's got a gas dryer, so I didn't think that was a bad idea. So what I did is I just disconnected the dryer plug and I'm gonna run this circuit off of that 240. Being a very old panel, I don't know if I can find those circuit breakers. I'm gonna try, cause that was a 30 amp breaker and I want a 20 amp breaker. So I was able to turn the power on with a 30 amp, but I need to do some research. I need to find a 20 amp breaker and get that installed as well. And there's the NEMA 620 plug that was removed. All right, now for the fun stuff. I have to drill a hole through the wood out the side of the siding. Uh, so I got me a long three quarter inch spade bit. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. That's where we're gonna be feeding the wire through. And you're gonna see I'm gonna grab a wire and uh, just feed it through the outside. And then I'm going to prepare the box on the outside and get that all taken care of. And here I am grabbing a wire. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through. And once we get the outside done, we'll finish up inside. So here I am, what I'm gonna do is I'm tracing out the wall box and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the hole. One thing I did notice that I wasn't wearing safety glasses. That's a no-no people. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. I did later on, you'll notice, I went and grabbed my safety glasses and continued. I was cutting without safety glasses. I preached safety first and I violated my own rule. So don't do that. So anyway, I'm kind of going ahead cutting the hole with the uh, jigsaw so I can get the wall box in. 
And once I get the wall box in, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the outlet and the waterproof box that goes on the outside. Once that's all done, I'll be ready to start fishing wire on the inside. I did notice that my blade was a little short, so I went ahead, when I did reset the blade, I also got a pair of safety glasses, and uh, that was a game changer, I think right there is where I noticed my blade's just not long enough, so luckily there was another longer blade in my jigsaw, so I'm going to go ahead and change that out, finish cutting the hole, and get my wall box mounted. Again, I can't stress the safety glasses factor. I can't believe I did that. But, again, don't be like me. Make sure you're wearing all your safety gear. So, you can see here. Um, stripping wires. And we're going to ready to wire up the outlet. Got my wall box in. So I actually was able to reuse the same NEMA 620 plug because that was the same plug style that was on the level two charger that we were using. I actually gave my dad my old three kilowatt charging plug that I had for my original Nissan Leaf. So um, he didn't have to buy it. So this, when you look at cost, it cost me probably $50, $60 in material. I already had a spool of wire at the house. Um, we reused the outlet. Um, I bought the waterproof box, the wall box, and everything else I brought with me. So all in all, this cost like $50, $60 to do. Finally installed the screw. That way the uh, charger doesn't dangle from the cord. All right, so I'm done with the outside. I got the plug in. I got the the cover on it so it looks good that's all done now i'm going to show you the inside there's where the wire coming into the house so i need to run it all the way along this drop ceiling it's a straight run we'll drop it down here into the box and what it ended up being this breaker here, now this breaker is too big for what we're doing. It is a 30 amp breaker. Now we need, this needs to be a 20 amp breaker because we are running 16 amps. So uh, we're not gonna draw anything more than 16 amps. So we're gonna be okay for the wire, but I'm gonna do some research and see if I can find one of these in a 20 amp and replace it because um, it doesn't seem hard to replace. You got screws back there in the back. Pull this off and then bolt a new one on. So uh, just to give you a little rundown of how we're going to install this on this breaker, you have two hot leads. So we're gonna have a hot right here, put one wire here, and then we're gonna put another hot wire here. And then we're going to tie our ground in up here and should be good to go. We'll be able to turn the breaker on and uh, the plug should work. Okay, here comes the fun part. Now I got to take the rest of this wire and string it through that drop ceiling. Um, I pre-cut the wire, gave myself a little extra. You want to give yourself a little extra. If you throw away two or three feet of wire, don't worry about it. It's worth the scrap because if you got found out you are short by two inches, it's going to wreck your day. So always give yourself plenty of extra wire. Um, I would say wire is cheap, but it's not cheap anymore. So, but anyway, it's worth the hassle of not having enough. So by me trying to cut corners and not taking all those drop ceiling tiles down, um, I ran into a little problem. Um, I strung the wire underneath some ductwork and it should have went above it so I can nail these, staple them all up to the floor joists. That was a mistake. So uh, if I was to 
give you guys a suggestion from what I learned. Don't do it the way I'm doing it and stringing it with all the tiles in place. Remove all your drop ceiling tiles. Open up the workspace so you know what you're doing. Um, I had to pull the wire back through, put it up over top of that ductwork, and then continue on stapling. So I'm going to run this wire all the way through. I cut that part of the video out where I had to pull the wire back out and run it back through because it was just... Um, I don't want to keep reliving it by watching this video. So anyway, here, once I got it in that far, I went ahead and started securing the wire to the floor joist. And you want to make sure you're staying away from any type of hazard to the wire. Any water supplies, any drains, anything that could get this wet. You want to keep it up and far away from that. Luckily, this is along the side of the house that has nothing but the driveway. There was no water supply, nothing. Uh, so I wanted to keep it away from the wall. So I like went one floor joist in and I ran it all the way back. So it's about 12 to 18 inches away from the exterior wall. So we shouldn't have to worry about moisture whatsoever. So I'm going to continue through and I'm going to secure this wire all the way back to the panel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to that breaker that was originally for the dryer. Uh, again, this is just pulling 16 amps. Um, the breaker too big. Yes. Um, I will find a replacement. I will uh, purchase a 20 amp breaker and get that changed. Hopefully they're still making these. If not, I can find some on either Facebook marketplace or eBay or some other type of selling area. My daughter came and bugged me for a little bit. And as I continue through, we're going to see this is kind of boring, but you know, I'm not cutting any of this out. We're going to go all the way and I'm making sure that I'm putting the tiles, the ceiling tiles back and the, you know, I bump those support frames and putting them all back in place. I want to make sure that, you know, I finish the job and it looks like I was never there when I'm done. That's doing the job right. And very careful not to break any of those ceiling tiles. Anybody's dealt with drop ceilings before, you know, they are very fragile. And uh, these are very old. Again, it's my parents' home. This is the house I grew up in. I played in that basement there. I couldn't tell you how many times. So, again, here we are in a panel. I'm stripping the wire, getting the coating off, getting everything ready. So I'm going to connect it to the black and the white wire to the hot leads as I described earlier. So I'm feeding the black wire to one side and I'm going to connect it to the breaker. And then I'm going to feed the white wire to the other side. Right there I'm stripping the end, getting it fed through, securing the lug, making sure it's tucked back away. Everything looks good. So now I'm feeding the white wire in a similar manner. I'm going to cut it to length, strip the end. I had a little problem with my stripper there. Yeah, you see me adjusting the stripper. So, yeah, I had a little problem. Uh, it's a nice stripper, just I think it got out of adjustment. So here I am securing the wire to the the white wire to the other hot side. And now I'm working with the ground. It's all secure. We're on. One a hundred and eighteen volts. Hundred and twenty one volts. Two hundred and forty volts. Okay, with that all done, we're gonna put the cover back on and we should be good to go. Test her out. We did plug in a car. 
and the car started charging at three kilowatts. So this was a success. And again, people, make sure you're following all codes and standards. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, please hire an electrician. I urge you not to try this yourself without having at least an electrician there watching what you're doing. All right. Thanks for watching.